Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we are going to be discussing what's going to come after Francine now that Tropical Storm Gordon's formed in the middle of the Atlantic, and will we see a subtropical storm form off the east coast of the United States. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Friday, September 13th, 2024. The blue arrows pointing towards the remnants of Francine. The black arrows pointing towards Disturbance 1, that are, which is our potential subtropical storm that could form. Pink is uh, what's left of Invest 94L moving through the Caribbean islands. And then purple is Tropical Storm Gordon. Here's our vorticity map showing all of our spin and energy in the atmosphere for the tropical entities that we are tracking. So here's a close-up view of our tropical storm Gordon, which formed earlier today. We can see that it's got an opened uh, exposure to the dry air to the north and west of the system because it's encountering a lot of wind shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So all of its thunderstorm convections to the moving to the eastern side of the storm, keeping it weak at the moment. It's got winds of 40 miles per hour moving west-northwest at 10. And based on the spaghetti track guidance models, it's good to continue moving in that direction. And then in about three, four days, all of a sudden make a sharp turn towards the north and northeast. So this shouldn't be a threat to any of the Caribbean islands. In terms of intensity, this one's expected to remain weak because of that wind shear. Uh, but does have an opportunity to strengthen once uh, it starts interacting with the non-tropical low in the middle of the Atlantic and but may potentially absorb it, giving it a boost of energy, uh, maybe getting it to Category 1 strength. We'll see. Here's what's left of Invest 94L as it moves through the Caribbean islands, bringing some squally weather, but nothing organized, No, so we don't have to worry about any tropical storms or hurricanes here. 0% chance of any development according to the National Hurricane Center. Then the next thing we'll have to worry about is potentially a subtropical storm forming in this region of the Atlantic, north of the Bahamas, but off the east coast of the United States, where we could see a subtropical storm form early next week. It's got a 10% chance of doing so over the next two days and a 40% chance over the next seven days. So let's use the GFS model to see how that could all play out. The 850 cyclonic vorticity, so it's basically, again, the energy and spin in the atmosphere that we're watching. The black hexagons disturbance one. Blue is the remnants of Francine. Pink is 94L, what's left of it. And then purple is Gordon. Upper level environment shows the upper level trough starting to form where our black hexagon is located, that's going to create that lift mechanism to create those thunderstorms for our potential subtropical storm. We have a low wind shear environment across the main development region mostly, except where Gordon's located just to its north. We have that high wind shear, so that's causing, like I said, those storms to move to the eastern side of that low pressure system. So two days from now on Sunday, September 15th, and we see the stretched out vorticity frontal boundary by our black hexagon with the point of concentration where our developing low pressure system could be forming along that front. So because it's frontal in nature, non-tropical, it's going to take time to gain some tropical characteristics. Uh, so that's why we, if it does so, it could be just a subtropical storm. Uh, brought in nature, but has characteristics of both nor'easter and tropical alike. Uh, but because the waters are here, are so warm, potentially could gain enough uh, warm core anomalies that it could become tropical fully. We still see Francine lingering around Mississippi, bringing a lot of rainfall to the region, and Gordon is still out in the middle of the main the development region, struggling to survive it's doing it's struggling because we have an upper level trough that's going to be causing some increasing wind shear still 
uh, but the upper level trough over the black hexagons could actually enhance potential development, like I said, because it's non-tropical in nature, not tropical. So we have a pocket of light wind shear around our non-tropical low, trying to develop those thunderstorms. And then we can see the struggling Gordon with dry air still on its western side. So three days from now, we see that the stretched out vorticity has consolidated into a broad area of circulation. So that's why I said we potentially could see a subtropical storm form. Gordon's still weak in the middle of the main development region, but to the north where we had that frontal boundary uh, associated with our potential subtropical storm, you see two other areas of non-tropical lows developed. One of those could interact with Gordon and give it the kick the boost it needs with the Fujihara effect to strengthen it into a potential hurricane. You don't see that on the Euro, on the GFS model, but I'll show you it on the Euro. So by the time we get to Monday night into Tuesday morning on the 17th next week, potentially see a potential subtropical or tropical storm making landfall somewhere near the South Carolina, North Carolina, maybe Wilmington, North Carolina border as a 999 millibar low pressure system. And then a couple of days after that on Wednesday the 18th, we see that it's moved inland to the Ohio River Valley at this point. And we see Gordon barely holding on as a tropical depression at that point maybe, but starting to feel the pole north because of the non-Bermuda Azores high in place, so it's got an opening to go northward, and it's also going to feel that Fujihara effect from that non-tropical low to its north as well. So we have a light wind shear environment, but not a lot of moisture to work with. But you can see how it gets a little bit of a kick as it moves north away from that wind shear Maybe a little boost in energy and moisture from the non-tropical low, allowing that thunderstorm convection to fire up and potentially strengthen the storm. But that would be back to tropical storm force. The, G the European model shows the opposite, where it looks even stronger than that. But we also see a pretty similar agreement with our subtropical or tropical storm forming going towards the Carolinas. So here's our ensemble models showing where our systems could go over the next seven days. We'll also be tracking another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa to see if it develops, but that one also looks to stay out to sea as well. So Tropical Storm Gordon will be in the middle of the Atlantic and shouldn't be a threat to any land. And then we have Disturbance 1, which could potentially become our next tropical or subtropical storm. The next name on the list would be Helene. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.